Hello. Hi, Simon. Good to see you again, Rebecca. And you. Now, I was very keen to talk to you because um, you're doing a very interesting uh, bit of research on behalf of the Food Standard Agency about uh, people's um, um, food reactions. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yes, yeah. Um, we're working with the Food Standards Agency on this project. Um, the Food Standards Agency are really interested to find out where people have reactions, what food mm -hmm. they have reactions to, or near misses. Um, because obviously they're, they're the agency that's um, uh, responsible for food labelling, um, for policies around food labelling, and information to consumers about that, and to food businesses. So they want to find out what, what's happening in terms of people reacting to food and why they might do that. So we're interested in people who have a food allergy, a food intolerance or celiac disease, or if they have a child with those conditions. And we're looking at the last five years. So have you as an adult or has your child had a reaction or a near miss in the last five years? So what we're interested in is, is so for, for example, um, you might have bought something that you usually are able to eat, but they've mm -hmm. changed the ingredients on it and you forget to check the label um, and you either eat it and have and have a reaction, have some symptoms, or you check last minute and you look at it and go, oh, I can't eat this anymore. And, and that would be a near miss. Um, or another example is if you were if you went out to eat in a restaurant and you told the uh, waitress that you had an allergy or a tolerance or celiac disease, um, but perhaps that message didn't get through to the kitchen and when the food came, you realised that it had something that you would react to on it. So you don't eat it and that would be a near miss. Or if you did eat it, not realising and had a reaction. They're the sorts of things that we're really interested in. Um, the, the Food Standards Agency want to know more about this so that it can guide their policies. Do they need to make changes to food labelling? Do they need to perhaps provide more education to food businesses? So we're looking at uh, both uh, people that buy products, so they go shopping, they buy something, take that home, prepare the food themselves. Yeah. But also if they go out and eat. That's right. Yeah. So and any type of reaction or near miss, wherever it might happen. Now, we're, we because the Food Standards Agency are only responsible for England, Wales and Northern Ireland, they're the three sort of countries we're interested in. Unfortunately, we can't include any anybody else. Um, so if if people do take part in the survey, it does tell them. And if they're if they're not in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, it just does pop up to say, um, sorry, sorry, you you can't take part in this this particular survey. But yes, if you live and had a reaction in any of those countries or an emis, wherever it what to whatever food, whatever type of packaging, whether it was home, whether it was out at work, in a canteen, in a restaurant, wherever it happened, we're interested in finding out about it. So we can provide a link uh, on this video uh, on how to participate. But if somebody does sign up to take part, what exactly are they signing up to? What are you going to ask? Well, we're going to ask them to complete a survey. It should take about 15 minutes and that survey is all online. So they follow the link. They will be given more information about the study and a consent form to complete. And then they um, can answer the survey questions. The things that we ask are you know, what reactions or near misses they might have had in the last five years. And then what we're interested in is what was the latest one? So they only have to tell us about one. They don't, you know, if they've reacted 20 times, they only have to tell us about the latest, the last time it happened. So that might be a reaction or it might have been a near miss. And of course, if it's a parent that we're telling us about their child, they don't even have to have been with their child when it happened, as long as they know about it and they know, you know, enough to tell us what happened. Um, so they tell us about their latest incident, whether it was a reaction or a near miss. And we ask lots of questions about um, what food it was, what type of packaging. So was it loose sold food or was it pre-packed? Um, where they bought it from, or was it a restaurant? Was it a supermarket? Was it online? You know, all of the, all of those sorts of questions. And then we ask questions about you know what happened. So 
was it that you told somebody but they didn't understand or was it that you misread a label or you know all sorts of things you could tell us what what happened that led to a reaction or an EMS? And then at the very end, we just asked some very sort of general demographic questions so we can get an idea of, of the, um, the, the, the type of people who are filling the survey for us. And for all of, this, all of the questions, we always provide um, a prefer not to say option, a don't know, I can't remember, or if we haven't given you the right choice of things, tell us what else. So we're trying to cover everything so that people can tell us, tell their story. So it's quite hard to do that in a survey. Um, it's easier to interview people, but we want to get an idea of from hundreds of people. So we're hoping that hundreds of people take part. So we hope we've got the survey right. Please let us know if we haven't. People have been getting in touch to, to let us know they've completed it or they've said, oh, this happened to me and that uh, I couldn't quite um, put that in the survey and we've made little changes so that hopefully we've got it right. Um, so the survey will take, as I say, about 15 to 20 minutes to, to, to complete. And then once we've finished and we've got all the data, we will be providing that back to the Anaphylaxis UK and all the patient organisations so they can put the results you can put the results on your website. That's great. And and how many people uh, ideally would you like to take part in this um, in the survey? Oh, ideally thousands. Yeah. <laughs> but so it's it's not a, it's not a medium to it's you know you're not looking at people just to complain. You're actually looking at um, understanding what happened so we yeah. can do something about it. That's absolutely right. We really want to find out why these reactions are happening. We know that that um, from our previous surveys that are around about 50% of people tell us in the past year they've had a reaction or a near miss. Um, and we know, you know, we're, we're not um, um, in the, in it, we don't want to lay any blame on anybody and say this is the, the fault of, of, of some particular person. What we really want to do is find out, well, why is this happening so that we can help people mm -hmm. to stop it happening? Um, particularly, obviously, the reactions. Uh, we want to make sure that we stop people um, having a reaction, um, putting in place better labelling, for example, or putting in place uh, better signage or something that will help people so that they can feel as if they can go out with confidence, go out to eat, go and purchase things in a supermarket. Um, so everything that we want, yeah, everything that yeah, we want. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's great. And, yeah. and, and you know, what, what again, at Anaflex UK, we're trying to kind of adopt this or encourage this approach that the airline industry have got, you know, this no blame culture so that we can learn. And, and it's really helpful what you're doing to see what trends there are. You know, uh, uh, sometimes you know, a shop or a, a, a restaurant might think, well, this happened you know, we can put measures in place to prevent that happening again, but actually without the learning and somebody else being able to share that information, it's kind of left isolated and it might may well happen elsewhere. So I think it is great and I would really encourage people to take part and hit that link. And while you hit that link, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and all that usual stuff on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Simon. Great. Keep us informed. Keep us keep us posted, and uh, and thank you for the offer of um, uh, publishing the results. And we'll have that on our website. When do you when do you hope all of this all might be concluded? Yeah, that's a really important question because we've got a quite a short window for recruiting. So we really need to get as many people to take part over the next couple of weeks. And then we should have the sort of top line results by the end of March, and then the full results by the end of April. That's great. That's very quick. You must be very busy. Yeah, awesome. Well, I won't keep busy. you any longer. That's <laughs> great. So uh, link should be below. Um, please do take part. And uh, Rebecca, as always, great to speak to you. Thanks very much, Simon. See you soon. Bye.